Super, super awesome. So, so here we see in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus actually has a will. Jesus has preferences, a.k.a. I don't want to go and die at the cross, Father. Don't like that option. I want option B. But we see him and he comes into this place where his, his whole being is literally in agony and war within itself. And the Bible says that so much so that he starts sweating drops of blood. And it's medically proven that extreme tension and stress will actually break the capillaries of blood near the skin and blood comes, starts coming out of your sweat glands. So Jesus was at an extreme turmoil where he came into ultimate submission before the Father. And I don't think it was just the decision. I think it was the spiritual pressure around him. There was massive spirit realm pressure on Jesus because it wasn't just a death. It was the entire weight of humanity starting to come on his being. And it pushed on him. And so he was feeling this tension. And so we see Jesus and he starts to beg the Father. Father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. Let me not drink it. And then he says, and then you see the obedience come out. He's expressing his desire as a person. And then he says, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. He denied himself so that you could make it. See, denying yourself is not necessarily quite as glamorous as we like to, oh, you know, whoever wants to follow me must deny themselves, take up the cross and follow me. That's what denying themselves looks like. When God asks you to do something and it costs you everything. It, it, there's times where God's asked me to do something. It's cost me my reputation. It's cost me friends. It's cost me finances. It's cost me stress. It's cost me comfort. But you know what? I'd rather be obedient and have God pleased in heaven and everyone upset on earth than the other way around. But, but here, watch this. He comes into submission, and the minute he says, Nevertheless, Father, not my will, but yours be done. It wasn't too much longer, and there was a disturbance in the garden. And Judas comes with all the soldiers, and Jesus wakes up. All the disciples are freaking out. Um, Peter's grabbed his sword. He's ready to cut some dude's ear off. He's grabbed his Ginsu 2000. He got a good deal on an infomercial on TV late one night because he couldn't sleep. And he's got his sword ready to go. And, and he's ready to do stuff. But Jesus has just come down into a position of ultimate submission to the Father. And he walks out into the clearing and Judas is there and all the soldiers are there and they've got the torch. Judas walks out and he says, I'm going to kiss the guy on the face who's Jesus. And he had to kiss him because he was just such an ordinary man that he wasn't distinguished. He's just a regular person like you and me. So he had to show them who he was. He walks out and kisses Jesus on the face. And then still, they say, are you Jesus? And then you see the result of submission. Then you see Jesus say, I am he. And the second he says, I am he, the result of submission against what he wanted, the denying of himself begins to bear fruit because the very power and the essence of God comes out of him like a shockwave into the garden. And it says all the soldiers fell down under the power of God. You see, if you truly want the anointing, it's not going to look like you climbing over someone. It's not going to look like you trying to associate with the right ministry or getting around the right relationship. It's actually going to look like you denying yourself. Because as you do, something from heaven is going to come down on your life and it's going to anoint you. 